Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Donovan Wagner back with another video for you guys today. Crazy, I know. Second one in one week. Insane. But now that summer's over, I plan on bringing a lot more YouTube content to you guys just to kind of shed some light onto my photo video experiences and maybe you guys can learn something along the way. And I think these videos are a lot of fun to make. So it's a win-win. So over the summer months, I've been shooting a lot of automotive content, whether it's been our Rye Phipps YouTube channel, which if you haven't checked out, definitely go have a look. Uh, my friend Ryan and I started a YouTube channel covering his Lamborghini collection and the lifestyle that kind of goes along with that. So it's been a ton of fun to shoot. Uh, we started that about a month and a half ago, and I think it's already at 6,500 subscribers, which is crazy. It's taking off. Um, so a lot of fun stuff over there. Go check it out. But with that have come a lot of cool automotive photos that we've managed to capture, shooting plenty of his cars, as well as a trip to Calgary and met up with some old friends, met some new people, and did quite a bit of automotive shooting uh, when we were there as well. So I'm definitely pumped on the automotive photos I've managed to capture in the last couple months. And I think I've learned a few new things when it comes to editing over the last couple months as well. So I'm just gonna share some of my techniques with you guys in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. And I'm not gonna cover too much on how I shot the photos. I'll go over the settings I used, but we're gonna make another video showing the behind the scenes of how we actually go about shooting the photos at a different time. So without any further delay, let's get into Lightroom and get started. Okay, everybody, so we are now in Adobe Lightroom and I'm going to be doing these on my MacBook Pro because I'm too lazy to figure out how to screen record on my Windows. So I'm just gonna use the trusty Mac with its QuickTime Media Player. <laughs> if you guys know an easy way to screen record on a Windows in the future, just definitely let me know in the comments below. This here is a photo of a gentleman named Glenn, his beautiful Porsche Carrera GT. So I had the pleasure of shooting this car in Calgary and you know, beautiful city, beautiful car, and we managed to get some really, really good shots. So like I said, I'll go over the settings I used. So we can see in the top right here that I shot this at ISO 160 at 35 millimeters F8 at 1 30th of a second. So I was actually shooting this uh, photo out of a McLaren car. So we were nice and low and you try to match the same speed as your subject car so that when you take the picture, you'll see here when I zoom in that the car is tack sharp, but the road and the wheels are to that nice blur effect. So that's how you manage to get those nice rolling shots. And of course, because the buildings are so far in the background, the motion to those aren't as drastic as something up close like the ground here. So again, I will make another video afterwards showing you guys how I go about shooting these, but today this is just about editing. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna tell you guys is once you're in Lightroom, it's always great to have a baseline for your edit. So presets help a ton. So I'm gonna show you guys what I will do here. Because this is a black or white car, I will drop, one of my favorites is Arctic and it's during the daytime, so we're gonna drop Arctic Day. So already, um, you will see what that does to the photo here, before, after, before, after. So all it is is a preset that somebody's gone through and made for you. <clears throat> you can go along the side here and see all of the settings of what they've changed, the tone curve, everything that they've gone in and changed for you. So that's where you'll go in and modify to your own taste. So I always like to add a little bit more noise reduction because I find um, I'm just a nitpicky kind of guy when I'm at 100% crop. So I like to make things sharp and not any bit of noise. Uh, then you'll throw your lens correction on there. And now there's one thing I'm noticing here because it's an Arctic preset, it definitely gives it a cold tone. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the white balance selector, something I know is black, are the tires. So if I click the tire, you'll notice that warms it up just a little bit because if you select something that's true white or black, with this eyedrop selector, it'll kind of decide what the white balance should be. Um, and from there, I might warm it up a little bit more. There, so that's already looking pretty good. I always like to give myself a bit of a baseline in Lightroom and then head over to Photoshop to do the majority of my editing. So I'm going to, just for the sake of this video, crop this into a 16 by nine and pretend that we are going for a full screen kind of screensaver look. <clears throat> now I'm gonna right click the image, edit in Adobe Photoshop, 
and we'll head over to Photoshop. Okay, and now we are over in Adobe Photoshop and ready to get started. So always grab your background layer and drag it down to a new layer to make a duplicate background copy. Now when you edit everything, we can kind of go back and forth non-destructive and basically if you screw up, you can always go back. So first thing I do when I'm in Photoshop is any patchwork I need to do. So I either use the patch tool or the spot healing brush tool. So just for the sake of keeping this speedy, let's use the spot healing tool and go in and just remove any of these imperfections. Uh, you can see the McLaren and the reflection here. It's an orange car, so not much you can do about that unless you are shooting with a circular polarizer to get rid of any reflections and glares. But too late to do that, and I don't feel like taking me out of there. So just going in and cleaning things up to your taste. Um, this is where it comes in handy if, let's say, there was a light post right here you wanted to clone out or a sign or anything like that you know i would go in and just patch those out of there to make it not so distracting but this looks pretty good there's nothing sticking out too obvious nothing coming out of the top of the car like a light post or sign so i'm going to call this good now what i do is i grab my lasso tool by hitting the l on the keyboard and i will actually select around the road so you can keep it kind of loose just around the car and just trying to select the road. So first thing I'm going to do now that I've got that selected <clears throat> is go down here to curves and I'm going to darken that road a little bit. So something like that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to grab filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and keep this at about 150 pixels. So that's going to smooth it out so you don't have that harsh line that you saw there at first. So now we've darkened the road and already it kind of draws your eye more towards the car, the city, all that fun stuff. So that's looking pretty good. And now what I'm going to do next is because there's all these buildings here, I don't want to use the lasso tool and get too sloppy around the edges. So I'm going to grab the pen tool and just kind of go along the roofs of all these buildings and again it doesn't have to be perfect but it's just selecting the sky so that we can adjust our curves to bring the highlights down a little bit in the sky and see if there's any information to be had there so a lot of times the sky will be completely blown out and not much you can do about it but if you are a perfectionist, you can definitely Photoshop in a different sky if you have the time or want to do such things. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep it, keep it simple and select just what I can and see what I can do. And again, these are just what I do to my photos. Um, by no means are these the, the only way or the perfect way. Editing is such a, a creative creative thing that everyone can throw their own taste into. I take a lot from one of my good friends, Mark. I'll throw his link in the description as well. He is a superb automotive photographer and editor, and I learned a lot of these tricks from him. He's super talented. So I'm going to try to darken the sky, but you can see there's not much coming back. So let's just do it for the sake of it and see if it did anything at all. It just kind of added a little bit more contrast to the top of the sky here. So next what I'm going to do is actually grab the rim. So I always like to throw emphasis on that motion blur by making sure you can see the rim. His rims are pretty light in color, so it's easy to tell against the black tire and dark, um, dark road. But this is a step I do nonetheless, so I will show you guys. And I select both of those rims and then I'll grab my curves again and basically just bump those up a little bit so you can see that light in the rims. And then I grab this end and drag it over so you can see it darkens the middle to show more of that kind of contrast in the rims there. It's a small detail, but I think it helps quite a bit. So already, let's go have a look by throwing this all the way into here into one folder, so group it. I can now see the before and after really easily by toggling that on and off. 
Perfect. So now what I want to do is kind of select the body of the car. So because we've already gone in and done our curves on the rims, that's why I'm just selecting around the rims because we've already kind of worked on those separately. So I'm just going to select the rest of the body now. And all I want to do now is sort of a similar thing we did to the rims where we bring up the, the highlights in the car a little bit and then drop the blacks to a deeper, more rich black. So that's just basically going to, I don't know, sharpen things up it seems. So depending on how how precise you went with your pen tool, you don't really have to Gaussian blur around it because you can't tell. There's no hard lines in and around the outside of the car. So I'm gonna call that fine for now. So I'm gonna add that to that group so that we can go ahead and toggle it, see how it's looking. And that's pretty good. So now what I wanna do next is I'm going to place a little bit of a sun flare on here. So these are another little trick of the trade where if you didn't shoot in ideal lighting circumstances, you can go in and add light flares and sunsets and all that stuff. And some people might say, oh, that's cheating, you know, you, you didn't get the perfect shot, but you know what? I love it. It looks really good. So for just keep things simple, I'll go with this one. So because the sun would be coming from the right side of this photo based on the shadows you can see, we will just transform, flip it horizontal so that now the sun's coming from over there. And we will drop it like it's hot. Hit enter, that will place it. And we will go into our actions now, the UV haze, hit play. It will do what it needs to do, which basically drops it to a pass through. Um, so now you can see you have a little sunset coming in. So obviously that looks ridiculous and not real at all. So first thing you're gonna to do is adjust the hue of that. So I'm gonna bring it to more orange, drop the saturation a little bit, head on down to the curves. And what I wanna do now is add more contrast. So I'm gonna hit it like that. Now I want to throw a gradient on there because obviously it would be brighter over here than it would over here. So by selecting where I want it to start, which would be roughly here, I'm going to drag it over that way. And now already that's looking a little bit more believable coming in from the one side of the photo. Now, obviously the car would be blocking the sun. So to make it a bit more realistic, you could go in and kind of paint in black where there would be shadows and just to keep things believable because people will say it's photoshopped if they know <laughs> for some reason that's like a big sin in the photography world if people know that oh, that wasn't real you photoshopped that <laughs> so just to avoid getting trolled out there let's just make this look as real as possible and to do that we're just going to bring it off the road a little bit where it wouldn't be so much and Go from there. Okay, so we're gonna drop the opacity of this to about 60, um, and then we'll hit before and after just to show you guys, so. All right, so that's pretty much all I would do to this photo is clean it up a little bit. You know, I would if I spent more time on this, I might get rid of some of these reds in the black paint here. Uh, darken the road, darken the sky, add more contrast to the rims, and then also to the body separately. So. And then I also went one step further and added this little sun flare over here. So I'm going to call that good. We'll head back over to Lightroom and I'll show you how I would then export it. So to go back to Lightroom, all you have to do is hit Command S or Control S and that will save it as a TIFF. And you can get right back over to Lightroom and your photo will be waiting for you. Okay, so we're back over in Lightroom now and you can see that our edited photo is now waiting for us here. And so you know, if you were happy with the photo as is now, you could go ahead and hit export to your file destination of choice, 
But if you were wanting to make a few more last second changes, um, like I probably will a little bit, um, you can definitely go back in, drop another preset if that tickles your fancy. You know, you could go one step further, right? So I'm just gonna add a clean look by Manny Ortiz and, you know, clean this up a little bit, make some adjustments to it. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but already just before and after yet again, it brings a little bit more life and punch to this photo. And a really cool tool within Adobe Lightroom that I've really started to use lately is in your HSL color drop down. So we all know you have your hue, your saturation, and your luminance. But one thing I did not really take for granted before is this little eyedropper piece here. So if you click this, go over to your photo, and let's say you wanna drop the blues a little bit. So you would drag, you could actually change whatever color you click on and drag up or down, you could change the hue of that selected color. So I'm on the tail light, that's reds. So I could change the hue of that color just by dragging up or down. I'm not gonna do that, but it works pretty good. So if I wanted to get rid of some of the blues in this photo, I would go to somewhere that has some blues and drag that down. And already that kind of drops. See, it'll drop the blue here. So it's kind of cool if you're editing skin and portraits. This is a lifesaver tool. So if you want to adjust the skin tone, um, you can actually simply click on their skin because everyone's skin tone is different. There might be more yellow, more orange, more red, depending on who you're shooting. So just by clicking this, it'll figure that out for you. You can change the hue, luminance, and saturation. So fun trick right there. All right, guys. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, it looks like a pretty awesome photo. I mean, it's an awesome car with an awesome city. So I didn't really have to do much to make this awesome. However, that's how I would edit that. I would go ahead and export that to my desired destination. But just to go back and show you guys, here's our final edited photo right here. And if we go back over to the right here, we can see this was the raw photo. So already quite a huge difference. We managed to clean this up quite a bit and just make it more visually appealing, I think. It's already a beautiful car. So like I said, it kind of did the hard work for us. Um, anyways, guys, that's how I would edit that photo. All right, guys, so that concludes our editing tutorial video for today. Hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of inside sights into how I edit my automotive photos and maybe you learned something here and there and can apply to your work. Uh, let me know if this was helpful, you guys. If not, whatever, I, I had fun making this video anyways. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.